it's funny because I've been in what I call a divine detour, even if it doesn't feel divine. For years now, until a few months ago, I always thought I manifested my worst nightmare because I did. That spiritual kind of trap of abundance wounds and shit like that that people talk about. And I say shit like that because I'm not in this divine detour because of abundance wounds or because I don't feel worthy. I'm in this divine because it is divine. Detour so that I can see the side effects of the timeline of the last years clearly for what it is. Not the sugar-coated version that I would have if I had manifested the reality that I want. Which is pretty much to be in the middle of buttfuck nowhere and not around all this shit. <clears throat> but if I hadn't lived in the city that I'm in, thank God it's small. Oh my God, it's huge to me. I wouldn't understand the actual housing crisis that we are in. Because I'd just be living my life. I wouldn't be aware. Of the takeover that's happening. Houses being sold. Buildings being sold. Boom. Really fast. But not by locals. By people from down south. What I mean by that is investors or people who have money. And buildings are too expensive. Where they live. So they're coming in. Takeover and hiking up prices. I wouldn't be aware of just how, how much true hopelessness there actually is. I can't avoid knowing I used to be able to last year when I had my car. I could just drive wherever the fuck I wanted not walk by anything. The ultimate timeline of not having the car stripped me of my freedom and my ability to just go anywhere. But it made it that every place I avoided walking because I can't go from here to anywhere without seeing the truth in plain sight. The people I used to drive by last year and I would smile who wouldn't look at me. Or I would actually get out of the car and gift them all that I could. I had no abundance, none. But I would give my marbles. And now I'm walking. I always have something that I can give. There's a part of me that my protection is with my angelics and my, my me that I am. But it's also the people around me who might not know my name or talk to me, but they seen, they see, they know sis. He's maybe not one of them. But my empathy and compassion 
is real. As scared as I could be sometimes to be brave and walk alone with Lily. And that might not sound like a big deal to someone else, but she's not a child anymore when she walks ahead of me. People stare. Men stare. Not the good men, but the other ones. I say the other ones. Good men don't know how old somebody is as they're walking down the street and looking her up and down. It's the most surreal feeling to be a mother of a girl that's growing into a woman. But there's a part of me that knows that there's always somebody hidden in a fucking bush or a corner somewhere. And those are the ones see me, even if they can't always look at me and talk to me. I don't know if that makes any sense at all. But it's still my truth right now, my reality that I live. Which I never lived my whole life until I was 49, 50. And now, in a couple days, 51. So many spiritual people talk about being calm in the middle of the storm. It's like, bitch, how the fuck can you say that shit? You're sitting there in your fucking house. You got your fucking cottage. You got your fucking car. Yeah, I know your storms are emotional. Yeah, I know you got other shit going on. But shit. You ain't got no clue what it's like to fucking see and be in the middle of certain things. And then other people coming from the spiritual perspective, yeah, they fucking lived it. They know, sis. They know, sis. But they don't talk the same. The advantage of living your worst fucking nightmares. What doesn't kill you does make you stronger. That's for fucking sure. 